Right on time. <laughs> we'll know any moment now. Paimon's been wondering. You seem to know Candace pretty well. Have you been friends for a long time? We've known each other for some time now. She's a pretty interesting person. Even though she's an extremely strong warrior, she never misuses her powers against others. Oh, Paimon knows what you mean. Like a lot of martial artists say, never take the fight outside the ring. Yep, I guess you can put it that way. It takes strong convictions to be as dedicated as she is and shoulder that kind of responsibility. Us mercs, on the other hand, we pretty much live from one day to the next. Well, Paimon thinks you're great, too. Really? Thanks for that. Oh, Sino's here! And he's pretty early, too! Yes. I was here yesterday to help out a little. To help out? By doing what? Sharing some interrogation techniques. Oh! Um, you mean you taught Candace some more... persuasive methods? Right. Come on in, everyone. Come on, let's go inside. I will hold my head up high. I won't hesitate no more. I will find the strength so I can be the one right by your side. Don't give up, hope shining. Gave it away. Oh, there's no mask that can hide true bloodlust. Cover up your eyes, and it'll still show itself at the corners of your mouth. Perhaps I need to work on my composure. Still, it's perfectly understandable why I'm angry. I'm sure everyone present would agree. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Please, don't feed us anymore. <laughs> We're gonna die. Well, looks like Sino taught her well. <laughs> You fear death yourselves, yet you do not hesitate to place the lives of others at risk. <laughs> the absurdity is mind-boggling. The ones you call mad scholars are known to us as the village keepers. They are vital members of our community, and some even count them as family. You come here to my village, and you treat my people as nothing more than stepping stones towards your goal. Tell me, what would you do to you in my position? Uh, mercy! Please have mercy! You've made your bed. We may both be desert dwellers, but there is one thing that I understand better than you. The resurrection of the Scarlet King will only result in war. And war serves no one. The people of Aru Village care little about which god is in power. Life may be tough and tiring, but we wish to preserve our way of life. A war would only cause us to lose all that we have. And that is not a responsibility that you can afford to shoulder. Uh, we understand. We're sorry! I'll tell you everything I know, please! Just 
Let us go. I'm listening. Uh, you might not believe this, but it wasn't us who came up with this idea. Someone was spreading rumors in the tavern. That's how we ended up hearing about the Scarlet King's resurrection. Some mystery man told us that mad scholars will make the perfect sacrifice to usher in the Scarlet King's resurrection. They give their lives, and we can get anything we wish for. They're called village keepers. Slip up again, and you'll regret it. Uh, yes, sorry! It was all that mystery man's doing. He told us to spread word about the Scarlet King's resurrection and talked us into helping him. In return, he said he'll help facilitate the resurrection process. I'm not sure. That's one. Huh? One what? Strike. You get a total of three. Then, you die by my hand. Wait, I'm telling the truth! We don't know anything! It was all him! <sighs> Two. He got us to lure them out of their houses in the night with some kind of incense. We take them to a junction outside the village, then the mystery guy takes them from there! <sighs> you gotta believe me, please. I'm telling the truth, I swear. Just ask them if you don't believe me! That was indeed the truth. Traveler, go on. You have to believe me. If I knew that, I would have told you his name right away. I'm not risking another beating to keep his secrets. No way! He, um, that guy, he wears a cloak, and he's always careful to cover his face. Uh, he calls himself the Scarlet King's envoy. I believe I may know what's going on. Uncle Anpu? What do you mean? <laughs> Smooth. Okay, speak. If my suspicions are correct, this mystery man they speak of could be from the Academia. Hmm. Some time ago, people from the Academia attempted to take the village keepers away. I refused, insisting that they are part of our community. It strikes me now that this secretive character shares the same goal they had. Which means it's highly likely that the Academia was purposely spreading a false rumor to trick the Radicals into delivering the Village Keepers right into their hands. <laughs> they were the ones who brought them here to begin with. Now they're trying to take them back? We aren't gonna let that happen. Not the Academia again. Just as I thought. But what could they want with the village keepers? People are nothing but tools in the eyes of the Academia. A change in their plans likely means they found another way to exploit the scholars. <sighs> Regardless, our top priority now is locating the village keepers. You're right. Isaka's still waiting for news on his grandpa. Time to go. Let's leave the village and try to track them down. Yes. Pack up and get ready to leave. You got it. Candace, I'll let you deal with the Radicals. Leave everything outside the village to us. All right. Let's meet back here once everyone's ready! What scheme is the Academia brewing now? Well, as you can see, I am merely sitting here and reviewing what we have deduced thus far. You were gone for ages! And now you're suddenly sitting here musing to yourself? Where have you been anyway? Hey, what's with the silence? You never think things through before asking questions. I'm giving you some time to make up for that. There's just nothing super obvious to pick with this guy. It makes it so hard. 
Well, you've heard nothing to suggest I left this whole time, so clearly I stayed in the village to investigate. Anyway, you plan to leave Aru village and keep searching for the truth of this matter, yes? <sighs> yep. We're not gonna find out anything more by staying here, so we thought that we might as well take the search elsewhere. No. I'm just surprised that you decided to team up with him. All Haytham, you haven't helped us out at all ever since we arrived at Aru Village. Bold of you to question our choices. Yeah, you're all talk! While you were investigating, I had my own work to do, which I've now finished. Really? Paimon doesn't believe you. To be honest, we aren't really a team, so I have no obligation to inform you of my whereabouts. Not to mention that going separate ways allowed me to find some important information that you all had missed. Huh? Right here in the village? Correct. What did you learn? I'm going to take you to someone. But, before that, you need to understand where she's coming from. What does that mean? How do you think the residents of Aru Village feel about what we're doing? In other words, do you truly believe every single word the villagers tell us? You mean, some of them lied to us? Hiding the truth does not necessarily equate to lying. Again, these people have their reasons. Remember what Gandis said? Most people in Aru Village don't necessarily care which deity is in charge of Sumeru. That's because whether the Scarlet King or the Dendro Archon has power is of little significance to them. By contrast, the perils of their daily lives are ever-present concerns. They won't simply share everything they know with you without good reason. That's why you believed there was no further information to be found in this village. Glad you're following along. Among those you have talked to, there's someone who was consciously keeping you out of the loop. In fact, she's been observing your every move since you arrived. The reason being, to someone who only wants to live their life in peace, any external factors introduce unpredictability into the equation. <gasps> those eyes, those fierce eyes. You, you look like a real fighter. Don't change the subject. It's quite obvious that she's intimidated by Sino's authority and strength. R right. You were asking about the vi I mean, the mad scholars. She corrected herself mid-sentence because she's aware that there are Scarlet King fanatics in the village. If she sounds too friendly towards the village keepers, she could easily make herself the Radical's next target. I think it's been a few days since I last saw them. I usually go to bed pretty early, so I'm not too familiar with what goes on at night. Remember? She made a point of denying her involvement in anything that occurs at night. But honestly, I feel quite sympathetic towards them. Even though they act a little strange, they've helped me in the past. If it weren't for them, my house would have collapsed long ago. After speaking to the village chief, it became clear that the village keepers had protected Aru village at night. In other words, the young miss was very much awake during that time. Then why would she lie? By getting involved with an outsider, she risks drawing unwanted attention to herself. As for why she might be so wary about all this, <laughs> maybe you should ask her. I'll pass on this one. You said that she is afraid of me. If so, it's best if I stay out of this. Miss Shawnee, as we discussed earlier, I've brought someone with me. <laughs> Mr. Alhatham, I'm aware of where you stand, but how can I make sure that your friends think the same as you? Huh? What do you mean? We need to clarify our stance or something? Go ahead and talk to her. You'll get the answers you want. Go on. Earn her trust. 
Is it really that simple? Uh, may I call you Traveler? Uh, hi, Traveler. I want to ask you something. Do you think the resurrection of the Scarlet King can truly change Sumeru for the better? Why is that? That's very similar to what Miss Candace says. I know you two are friends. That's why I'm willing to talk to you, even though I do have some reservations. Before, I wouldn't even have the courage to ask something like this. Traveler, do you believe our lives will get better? So, it isn't wrong of you to be weary, and we aren't really residents of any one nation. But even so, we've met lots of people from different places, and we've always fought for what we believed in. We have friends in Sumeru, and we want to help them. That's why we decided to stay here for a while. I want to trust you. My apologies for posing my questions like that. To be honest, I didn't expect you to come back for more information. Oh, Haytham told us you have your reasons. It's okay, we understand. The fact is that I'm... Only one side of my family is desert folk. I don't really fit in anywhere in Sumeru. Some believe in the Dendro Archon, while others believe in the Scarlet King. I don't belong to either side, and neither side would want me. Speaking of which, the Radicals mentioned that they despise traitors. Do they just think that anyone who's different from them is a traitor? Yeah. Some people can be so narrow-minded when it comes to bloodline and beliefs. It makes no difference what I say or how I behave. I'll always be suspected of having ulterior motives. Slowly, I just stopped talking to people. I pretended not to hear or see anything. All I want is to live my life in peace. And then it happened. The village keepers who had helped me disappeared with no explanation, and I didn't dare breathe a word about it to anyone. Until now. You can tell them. I'm sure he'll keep your secret. <laughs> all right. I'll tell you what I told Al Haytham. I actually have a sharper sense of hearing than most. Sometimes... I hear strange crying sounds in the night. <gasps> there are ghosts? Perhaps. I'm not sure. It's faint, but it's definitely the sound of crying. It comes from far away in the distance, and always carries very raw emotion. It used to be louder and more frequent, but ever since you arrived in the village, it doesn't seem to happen as often, and when it does, it's much quieter. I have to focus really hard to make it out. I confirmed this with the guards on night duty. They also have someone with a good ear, and he's heard similar sounds at night. But, because we're in the middle of a desert, he would rather believe that they are the cries of beasts than ghosts. There's really nothing around these parts, except for an old hospital not far from the village. I think they used to use it for treating Elazar, but it's been abandoned for years. Yeah, let's go! Oh, is this the place? Oh, it's in terrible shape, and there's sand everywhere! Empty and forgotten. An ideal place to hide people. Oh, my God. 
Spark things up a little. Blitz. This is the one. <laughs> Let's go in and take a look. Patience. Shawnee says she only hears the crying at night. We have time to burn. Until then... I'm taking a break. <sighs> and just like that, he sits down. Wait, he even brought a book to read? What are you reading? Let Paimon see! Okay, sure. that? Oh, Paimon gives up! You keep reading your book! See ya! How is he so relaxed? Look at him, reading an impossible book in a creepy place like this! Hey! Paimon's your Tibet travel guide! Paimon knows plenty of useful stuff already! And anyway, it's not Paimon's fault that the books people read in Sumeru are so complicated! Getting so sleepy. Huh? What was that sound? There it is. It's coming from that direction. Is the sound coming from here? Huh. Paimon's not seeing anything. Hmm? It's from below. Uh, but there's no way we can get down there. Something is off about the interior here. Hmm. As I thought, there's a hidden structure. around here. Let's keep exploring.
propagate! <laughs> You've been a naughty boy. Yep. Closer. Blitz. Shake it and stick. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Hip. Whoa. Yep. You're in for a little shock. Think you can bully me? Gentle. <laughs> You're in for a little shock. Expect to see him here. You know him? He's Razak, a senior of mine at the Academia. He's a scholar too? Is he the kind that holds up in a forest and mumbles stuff about training? No. And that's the problem. Razak was never involved in any of those things. He never trained in the forest, let alone reach Satyavada life. Leaving that question aside for the moment. Him being here alone means that we might be too late. Looks like they've already taken everyone away. For whatever reason, they left Razak here. Perhaps they simply didn't have time to come back for him. Hmm. There are drag marks on the ground. They're clearer by the doorway. Someone was forcefully drawing a cart that was loaded with something heavy. Loaded? With... people? That is one possibility. Hmm. It looks like they were in a hurry, as if they were afraid of being caught. In their haste, they failed to notice Razak hiding in a corner. The symptoms are identical. Looks like we found living proof. Huh? Why do you say that? Allow me to jog your memory. Recall your time at Port Ormos. Don't you think his symptoms look familiar? Oh, now that you mention it, they're acting the same way! Correct. The Academia is behind all of this. It isn't difficult to deduce their rationale. First, the Academia spread a false rumor of the Scarlet King's resurrection, emphasizing the role of the village keepers, the mad scholars who were exiled to Aru village. These rumors were all the persuasion that the radicals needed, and those based in Aru village leapt into action. Unbeknownst to them, of course, through rounding up the scholars, they were actually helping the academia. As well as being able to exploit the radicals for their own ends, this scheme has one further advantage to the academia. 
All the risks and responsibilities are offloaded onto the Scarlet King's followers. Life for the Desert Dwellers has been brutal ever since the Scarlet King's death all those years ago. Beneath the surface, feelings of desperation are widespread. Many would give everything they have for the prospect of something better. Anyone looking to exploit that for their own ends simply needs to make a few empty promises. Even if complications arise, people will see that those involved are all followers of the Scarlet King and look for no further explanation than differences of belief. A deep-seated mistrust of the desert and everyone in it by the rest of Sumeru will make sure of that. The notion of an academia plot wouldn't even cross their minds. It may seem like a simple strategy, but it is able to work wonders under Sumeru's current circumstances. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. It's in line with the village chief's theory, too. But there's still one very important question. Wasn't it the academia that brought the scholars to Aru village in the first place? Why does it want them back now? Throughout this process, one thing has changed. The scholars' identity. First, they were scholars. Then, they became lunatics. After that, they were exiles. And finally, they become missing persons. An exile is still patently a living, breathing human being. But when someone becomes a missing person, that is brought into question. If you can't find someone, you have no way of knowing what exactly happened to them. That makes missing people an ideal resource. Resource? For what exactly? One possibility is that the information in their brains could be extracted into knowledge capsules. Extracted? You mean, canned knowledge comes from people's brains? With the technology of the Sumeru Academia, it's entirely possible. Perhaps the process caused them great suffering, which is why they cry out in the dead of night when no one is watching them. So, the human brain... No, nah, Paimon doesn't want to think about this! I'm the Academia scribe, after all. I'm familiar with their projects. Anyway, judging by Razak's state, the contents of a divine knowledge capsule were extracted from his mind, but something went wrong in the process. Or perhaps his curiosity got the better of him, and he used such a capsule for himself. But uh, Paimon's a little confused. Can they just use anyone's brain? The look on your face tells me you've realized the answer. That's right. To some scholars, gaining knowledge about the gods is their entire life's pursuit. Extracting can knowledge is just one of the extreme measures they turn to. However, I can't help but wonder. What do they seek to gain from divine knowledge? The academia is going out of their way to look for forbidden knowledge. But what is their ultimate goal? I've spent quite some time trying to analyze the contents of the Divine Knowledge Capsule, but to no avail. It seems like my way of thinking is too different from theirs. You mean, you're not even slightly interested in getting your hands on this forbidden stuff? All scholars seek to expand the horizons of knowledge, but I'm not particularly interested in gods, so I don't share their degree of zealotry. Extracting information from people as if they were lifeless objects? <laughs> if this is the direction of academic progress, then the academia may as well shut its doors. Sounds like you're really against all this. Of course. The academia's actions run contrary to their rules. Whether it be academics or knowledge, everything has its boundaries. If those lines are crossed, the rules and order that govern everything in the world will be destroyed. This matter needs to be corrected, just like fixing a typo in a book. Wait, didn't you step in to help because you felt sympathy for those poor people? Not to be callous, but no. My criteria are a little more restrictive than that. There is no shortage of suffering in Sumeru, and the same can be said for the rest of Tevat as well. What do you plan to do about that? Save every last person? Um, probably not. Uh, Paimon's not 
sure. You can say that. Simply put, I don't blindly place my faith into strength or heroism. I do what I want. The Divine Knowledge Capsule is something I want to investigate in full. That doesn't mean I'm willing to take action for the sake of a few strangers. Paimon's been wanting to say this for a while. There are a lot of bad guys in the Academia, but you're not one of them. You're their weirdo. <laughs> you're probably right. Though I must say, I quite enjoy this feeling of being the odd one out. Uniqueness is also an asset, is it not? Wow, that's a great way to think about it. Paimon's really impressed. If only Miss Shani had a similar mindset, her life would definitely be a lot easier. I'm just a more likable person than her in general. There's nothing more to it than that. <sighs> He won't last long if we leave him here. Let's take him with us. We'll work out our next step after we return to Aru Village. We're back! You must be tired. You should rest and take some water. What's the situation? Hmm? Who's this? Unfortunately, somebody who's too young to take on the role of Isak's grandfather. Nevertheless, he's one of the people we're trying to find. So, at one point in time, the abandoned Elizar Hospital served as the Academia's site for extracting Divine Cant knowledge. Their plan must have been implemented at some point before we arrived at Aru Village, since Divine Cant knowledge has been in circulation for a while now. Yet, they fled once we were headed to the village, almost as if they knew we were on their trail. Why is that? Hmm. Yeah, why is that? We may have a mole in our midst. One of us could be secretly revealing our whereabouts to the Academia. Huh? Are our friendships that shallow? <sighs> Looks like none of you have realized wherein lies the issue. Sino, you're the reason why they can predict our movements. Wait, what's that supposed to mean? Choose your next words very carefully. It is simply a logical inference. I have my reasons. So what you're saying is... Sino's the mole. Interesting. And here I thought you were the most suspicious one, I'll hate them, Since you were always acting alone. I know. You have a point. But I realized something as we were returning from the hospital. Sino isn't like any of us. What are you trying to say? Do you still remember who you are? General Mahamatra. <laughs> As a Matra, you are no doubt privy to certain kinds of information. Before you can take action against someone, you are required to have all the facts available, including the less than savory details. Simply put, the Academia has traditionally allowed you access to a wealth of sensitive information. Knowing their modus operandi, wouldn't you expect them to take precautions against you? If you want to raise a vicious wolf, you need to make sure that you can avoid its bite. The Academia is monitoring me? It's not that simple. The Academia has eyes all over Sumeru, but they have a special protocol for dealing with you. Every so often comes a Nyagarbaha day. On this day, the Academia enters new information into the Akasha through knowledge capsules. I remember seeing the thick notebook next to the control panel once. Its contents were all about the General Mahamatra, his activities throughout the day, preferred methods of enacting judgment, everything. You're saying that the Academia entered my information into the Akasha too? But what's the point in doing that? My actions aren't important enough to be added into the Akasha. The Akasha is capable of computation. Huh. 
The Akasha's algorithms are entirely capable of predicting your movements using the data entered, when you would depart, the route you would follow, your destination. It knew all of this. It predicted my every move. The Academia has been watching you longer than you think. So that's how it is. Sino adheres to his principles so strongly that he's actually a thorn in their side. Tenacity of will and steadfast faith are worthless to the Academia. They need scholars who are easily pliable and mindlessly go after anything they can profit from. Sino, don't take it to heart. This just proves how much of a trustworthy ally you are. <sighs> they escape because of me. Don't blame yourself. It's not like any of us would have known. I have an idea. If they predicted my movements, then I might be able to guess where they went. Whoa, you bounced back fast. There is always an opportunity for safety after danger passes. Oh, so that's how it is! Paimon gets it now! If the Academia is trying to avoid Sino, then the safest place would be... Yep, that's right! They'll want to proceed in the direction opposite of where I'm going. I must go. There's also something I want to investigate. Let's go, guys! After him! Please, wait! I want to go, too! Hmm... You want to go, too? If so... You have to promise you'll stay safe. I want to find Grandpa. I promise I'll be careful and not cause any trouble. Everyone, I leave him in your hands. Yay! Let's go! Remember to pack some food with you! Paimon feels like we're missing someone, though. Hmm... So, where do we go from here? Yes. After leaving the village, we should head straight toward the desert. I know the desert like the back of my hand. Is that because you play here a lot? Yep. One time, Grandpa almost got lost in the desert. But I was the one who brought him back. There's something here. What's this? It's buried in the sand. Hmm. <laughs> Looks like we'll need to roll up our sleeves and do some work. Oh, and Paimon thought running around everywhere was already enough work. Okay, okay. So, we have to dig it out? Whatever's down there, it looks like it's buried really deep. These are likely fragments of an Academia-developed device, something akin to a headset. Looks like there were more than one village keeper. They must have been escorted this way because there are device fragments scattered around here. Let's split up and search the area. Chances are that we'll find other things nearby. Is this what we're searching for? It looks kinda scary! This is definitely a device used to extract divine knowledge. How did it end up buried in the sand? That can't have been part of the plan. They must have been attacked along the way. Wait, what? Grandpa, I hope you're okay. Don't worry, your grandpa's gonna be fine. Razak didn't display any signs of starvation or dehydration, which means that they left fairly recently. We should be able to catch up. One more thing. Given that the device had been entirely covered by sand, I believe the attack must have happened prior to the sandstorm. Let's keep going. They can't have gone far. Ugh! But running on sand is so tiring! But you're flying, aren't you, Paimon? Is flying over sand tiring, too? Ugh, of course it is!
voices over there. Hmm. It sounds like an argument. Whoa! You have really good ears! Don't get any closer. They'll notice us. Dia's talking with the Aramites? Hmm. Very interesting. Let's listen in. If you had informed me sooner, there'd be plenty of room for us to... You're one of us. We would never lie. Scholars. You don't know as much as I do. Need me to... <laughs> I knew it. That's our Dia. Dia? Why would you... Dia! Hey! What are you doing? Huh? Didn't you say you'd help me find Grandpa? Why... Why are you on their side? <laughs> well, look who's here. Ain't that something? Ugh, this complicates things. You've betrayed Aru village. So, this is the great General Mahamatra. <laughs> Dear, you'd be better off as my assistant than hanging around with this motley crew. Seen for yourself, I have the means and methods, and my ideals are far more admirable than theirs. I'm not the type that's easily swayed, Raman. You of all people should know that. Wait, what's going on, Dia? Whose side are you on here? Shut it, Paimon. It doesn't matter. Whichever side you pick, nothing could deter us from the grand mission of resurrecting the Scarlet King. Once our Lord of Old returns to this land, we will have a new beginning. Face the facts, Raman. It's not gonna happen. You should understand that more than anyone. Have all your years as a merc taught you nothing about placing hopes in a ruler? I'm a desert dweller and a proud follower of the Scarlet King. Whether I live by the edge of the sword or in peaceful comfort, my soul will always carry this conviction. It's not too late yet. The village keep- Mad scholars aren't gonna bring the Scarlet King back to life. You don't understand, my dear lady. Pursuing our faith is our purpose in life. Even if the chance of success is one in a million, we must be willing to give everything we have. Even if it'll expose you to the Academia? Even if they end up disbanding the Aramites? Your Aramites, which you've worked so hard for all these years? Yes. We've waited a long time for this day to come. The sun and the moon no longer shine here. All you see now is cracks in this desiccated land. But fate has finally dealt me a hand to play against the Academia. With these scholars in our custody, we'll stomp the Academia's forces and fight our way beyond the wall of Samuel. Ridiculous. Think about it. The Academia controls the entirety of Sumeru. Your powers are negligible in comparison. If you still don't believe me, then try asking these two men. They're also against the Academia, but neither of them are as arrogant as you are. <laughs> they look more like pawns of the Academia to me. Why would I listen to anything the people of Greater Lord Ruka Devada have to say? Filthy traitors. Your god abandoned all honor and betrayed the Scarlet King. We desert dwellers will never trust the likes of you. It's impossible to communicate with someone so hostile. Perhaps we should. Do you really believe that by kidnapping the scholars, you'll be able to negotiate with the Academia? These people have no value as bargaining chips, but I could be persuaded to take their place as your next hostage. These scholars were exiled from the Academia. I, on the other hand, am their current scribe, and will be a much greater asset to you. Wait, you can't be serious. So, you want to trade places with the hostages, do you? Precisely. Any wise person would gladly accept my offer. What are you thinking? What if they decide to kill you instead? Well, that would be bad luck for me. However, I'd get the chance to observe the scholars, perhaps even find out the truth. <sighs> Think you can talk me over with that confident look of yours? I'm not trying to persuade you. 
I'm using this as a means of joining forces against the Academia. You are the scribe. What do you have against the Academia? Not all desert dwellers believe in the Scarlet King, and the same applies to the Academia. Why must all knowledge seekers approve of the Academia's way of doing things? <laughs> you Academia scum! Every last one of you is nothing but a hypocrite, just like everyone else on the other side of that wall. I've made myself clear enough. I won't listen to another word from the Dendro Archon's people. Not so fast. I'll hate them. Do you stand by everything you just said? <laughs> I never make empty promises. You know you're making a dangerous decision, right? I do. Good. Raman, hear me out. These people are my friends. Maybe you can't take the followers of the Dendro Archon at their word, but what about me? Do you trust me? <sighs> We've known each other for years. Of course I do. In that case, I'm willing to vouch for their honesty with my right arm. <sighs> Come on, Raman, don't be a coward. If you're serious about taking on the Academia, you need to steal yourself. You can't be afraid. <laughs> An arm from the flame main. You've piqued my interest. But what if you refuse to oblige? What should I do then? No one's a fool here, dear. We're mercs. And mercs don't tend to live long unless they have their wits about them. You're not wrong, but this is different. I promised my friends that we'd bring back the village keepers together. <laughs> Let's do it right here then! Give me your right arm as proof of your resolve. Uh. Don't listen to him! He's not even trying to negotiate! He just wants to make things more difficult! That's fine. Are you crazy? We came here to save lives. One arm for that many people is still a pretty good deal, if you ask me. Raman, I'm holding up my end of the deal here. You'd better not let me down. Sure. Go ahead and cut off her right arm. No! Dia! What are you gonna do? Think of something! You don't have to go this far. That's not for you to decide. Do it! Stop! What's wrong? Can't do it? Flame Mane, you and I are both desert folk. Cutting off your arm is no different than cutting off my own fingers. Where's the sense in cutting my own kin to pieces? <sighs> You've shown me that you're serious. Go on now, take your friends and leave. Meet me in the desert at noon tomorrow. I was really counting on him not going through with it. Dia! That was crazy! Have you all lost your minds? What if he'd actually cut your arm off? Hmm, then I'd just have to hold my claymore with my left arm. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. But sometimes when you're out on a limb, you gotta double down to seal the deal, you know? Don't ever make a promise like that again. I can deal with the likes of them. If it came down to it, you would not lose to them either. I don't doubt it, Sino, but this is about more than me and them. There's a lot more where they came from. Even if we got rid of one bunch of radicals, there are others out there. Wiping them out would do more harm than good. <sighs> As you wish. I'm sorry, Dia. I should have stayed put and listened. I should have trusted you. It's okay. I promised you I'd help find your grandpa, so I'll do whatever it takes. 
Whatever it takes? <laughs> you just might be scholar material. Huh? Are you serious? The Eremites once said that I was a lunatic. Perhaps a little madness is essential to be successful in research. Why does it feel like he's using his praise for me as an excuse to brag about himself? Okay, let's get moving. We should head back to the village and rest up. Today was just a trial run. Noon tomorrow is gonna be the hard part. are a real motley crew. There's certainly a diverse range of characters. Hmm. Yeah, that could explain it. Oh, Paimon can play lots of different characters too. Judgy Paimon, knowledgeable Paimon, helpful Paimon. And of course the classic, completely misses the point Paimon.